Hello and welcome to this James Bike Eye where in front of us today is a bike that really goes against the grain for just how conservative Trek often is because in front of us is the brand new 2023 Gen 6 Trek Fuel EX and this bike for 2023 has added a whole ton of adjustment, a lot of capability, and a bunch of things I am very excited about. And this video, we're gonna cover some of the updates and changes to this new Trek Fuel EX8, go over all of those, and then of course, we'll do a rundown of the parts real quick before heading up with what the weight is. So if this kind of thing's interesting to you, I suggest you sit back because this is one heck of a bike to check out. Trek has been known for making really reliable and sometimes a little vanilla trail bikes, but they've always gotten the job done and over the last decade or so, I've had a few of their Trek Fuel EX models. Typically, I've found them to be really nice for tackling all sorts of terrain and, you know, occasionally leaving a little bit to be desired as far as customization and really dialing in exactly the perfect bike for me. So in 2023, Trek has gone to address that and giving a ton of adjustment to this bike, giving a lot of spec levels as well as a carbon and an aluminum frame. And this one in front of us here is in fact the alloy frame and it's rocking their platinum alpha aluminum. And that means that this is a shaped and butted aluminum frame. It does have smoothed out welds, although lots of stacking on those welds for strong connections. It went away from the prior generations that had something called knock block, which was a steering limiter that some people liked, some people didn't, and went back to a more traditional down tube with that little bit of bend just in front so the bars can go all the way around. Nice change if you wanted that on your bike, but they've now added things to this frame, such as this internal frame storage with this door that can come off, a little burrito roll inside for their bits, and you can put that right back in, carrying all your stuff down in the down tube to keep things low. They've gone back to a threaded BSA bottom bracket, which is a beautiful thing to see. And they've upgraded the seat post this year to 34.9 diameter seat post, which allows both a bigger and stronger dropper post. The larger diameters have allowed droppers to get quite a bit more reliable, but you'll also see as you look at it, that seat tube is now both steeper and straighter than prior generations. The idea there is you can get a longer dropper post as needed. And then as we roll to the back of the bike, we get to see the newly revised ABP suspension setup. Now, this suspension offers a ton of adjustment as well as the adjustment to the rest of the geometry. But a few things to talk about real quick is what ABP is, is basically a modified single pivot. So you've got the single pivot coming from just above the crank, which is gonna help with some anti-squat characteristics. But then when we go to the back, the bearing setup to allow the rear end to flex is modified by having a bearing concentric with the axle. Basically what you need to know there is that turns this into a true four bar linkage, even though the pivot is on the axle. Now with that pivot on the axle, that means that you have virtually no brake jack. So the anti-rise characteristics are really strong on this bike. And that's part of what the ABP means. It means active braking pivot. And so that's the magic right there. Now, when it drives forward to the rocker link, which is gonna push down on your shock, we'll have an adjustment for a high and low position with what Trek calls their minnow link. Essentially, it's this little spot that allows you to flip a chip and adjust the bottom bracket height and adjust the head tube angle by about half a degree. But then when you go through that rocker link, you can now see on this generation Trek Fuel EX, we now have a space for a reservoir shock. And actually, you can even run a coil shock on this bike. Now that's a departure from prior generations, and most of that is due to their new ability to adjust the progressivity of the suspension. So right there, you can see a less and a more progressivity to this chip. Essentially what that's doing is that's changing the mounting location. You can see you can move that shock and in the current position, that's the less progressive setup, which means it's gonna be a little more plush, a little more forgiving while riding. 
but you can move it to the more progressive suspension setup if you're a more aggressive rider or when you're riding with that coil spring. So that's a huge change for this year. And in fact, as things have grown in capability, the front end of the bike has gone to 150 millimeters of suspension travel and out back is 140. So the bike is really bridging that gap of all mountain to what you could even still do a few enduro races or take it up to a trail day at a downhill park as well. And to keep going with all the adjustments you can do on the bike, the front end can now have swapped out headset races so that you can adjust the head tube angle without affecting bottom bracket height. Now, when we talked about it just a little bit ago, when you adjust this high and low position of the minnow link, what that's going to do is that's going to either steepen or slacken the head tube angle based on where it was before, but it does affect the bottom bracket height. Now, if you want to keep the bottom bracket high, but you want to slack out the front end, well, you can do that by changing out these headset cups with a slacker or steeper cup. Basically, it's an ovalized cup that you can flip around and it changes the front end by a full degree slacker or steeper based on what you're looking for out of the bike. And that might be something they took a cue out of the Specialized Stump Jumper Evo, which came out a few years ago as a more adjustable version of their highly popular Specialized Stump Jumper. And that Stump Jumper, the standard version, is exactly what this bike is going after. So it's giving the customization of that more enduro rig, but still on an all-mountain trail bike. So it's now time to get into that customization. You must be thinking, man, there's a lot of different places that you can go with this. And that's true because Trek even includes the ability to run this bike mullet on the rear. Now, all of these bikes, except for the extra small and small, are always going to come with 29 inch wheels. The extra small version is going to be 27 and a half. And in fact, the small version can come with 27 and a half or 29 inch wheels. But on the bikes that are rocking 29ers, you can set up the back end with a mullet by lengthening out the front shock to 160 millimeters with either upgrading the air spring to a longer setup or changing out the fork and then running that minnow link in the high position. So you can set that up. You can also raise and lower the back end with that half a degree of adjustment of head tube and seat tube angle and bottom bracket height. And you can adjust up the progressivity of the rear end with that more and less progressive switch on the back. Now, if you're anything like me, you sometimes love to set it and forget it, right? Where the bike comes out of the box properly set up because it is a little tough to get all those differentiations, especially if you're not riding the same exact trail system uh, in the same conditions after each change. So Trek has come out with a pretty cool thing on their website where you can kind of conceptualize the changes and what that does to the geometry right online with all the different adjustments. And for our purposes, let's talk about how the bike comes straight out of the box. So it's gonna come with that 150 mil fork up front in the neutral position. It's also gonna come in the low position for the minnow link and the less progressive position for the shock. And that's gonna end us up with a head tube angle of 64 and a half degrees, a seat tube angle effective at 78.2 degrees, a chainstay length of only 435 millimeters, and a reach in a size medium of 450 millimeters. And what that tells us is effectively compared to say that stump jumper we talked about before, the bike is a little bit slacker, it's about the same reach, and it's gonna have a steeper seat tube. So we should expect this bike is gonna climb really well and have some strong capabilities compared to the other ones. Now, I haven't had a chance to get any real time on this bike, but I'm sure I will in the future, and I can't wait to share that when I do. We've been spending a whole bunch of time talking about all the upgrades to this frame, but let's cover the part spec. So this being the Fuel EX8 means that this is indeed that aluminum frame, and the 8 is the highest level spec of the alloy frame. And with that, you're gonna get a Fox Rhythm 36 up front. This is a 36 millimeter stanchion rhythm fork. It does rock their Fox Grip Damper, which is a pretty nice damper setup. Of course, boost up front. And when we go out back, 
it has the float X rear shock. This shock is gonna have lots of adjustment. It has that external reservoir to help keep the temperatures down. And then the drivetrain is gonna be a combination of Shimano's SLX and XT setup. So out back, you've got the XT rear derailleur runs through an XT rear cassette. And then up front is going to be the XT shifters, which control that rear derailleur and slows the bike down via the Shimano SLX brakes with the four piston calipers are clamping down on six bolt rotors attached to Bontrager's rapid drive hubs. These hubs are 108 teeth of engagement, which is a really fast engaging hub, and they lace up to the Bontrager Line Comp 30 alloy rim. It's a strong 29 millimeter internal width, tubeless ready, wrapped in Bontrager XR5 Team Issue 29 by 2.5 tires. This is the most aggressive XR tire in Bontrager's lineup, which is still their all mountain tire setup. Any more aggressive than this, you're ending up in their Enduro line with super heavy casings, but really durable. And then of course the cockpit is all aluminum with a Bontrager Line 35 handlebar, a Line 35 stem, so 35 millimeter bar clamp there. And then out back, of course, a Bontrager Arvada saddle mounted up on a Transex dropper seat post. Now those seat posts are gonna come in different drop lengths based on the size of your bike. So you're gonna get the longest drop possible for each given size. Well anyways, that's a lot that we've just talked about. Time to find out what this Fuel AEX-8 in a size large weighs. And the actual weight of the Trek Fuel EX-8 in a size large comes in and weighs 34.7 pounds.